Hi folks, thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk a little bit about um, the current federal standing of marijuana. Uh, as you probably are not aware, marijuana became illegal in the United States in 1937 as an agricultural product. But it wasn't until the Controlled Substances Act in 1970 that it got listed as an illegal substance for all medicinal purposes. And it's in a category with a whole bunch of medications or substances that are felt not to be medications. One of the stipulations is uh, that they have no accepted medical use. Additionally, they are supposed to have a high uh, potential for abuse and a high potential for harm. Those are the three crucibles that land you in the category which is called class one on the controlled substances list. It's not clear to me or to anyone else, quite frankly, how marijuana ended up on that list in the first place because at no point has anybody been able to show that it meets those three criteria. And yet every year, nearly every year since 1970, there has been either a petition or a bill introduced to reclassify it and it has been a dismal failure every time. Thankfully, at the moment, both the House and the Senate have bills in front of them to reclassify from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2. Well, Schedule 2 is kind of an interesting choice also. The big problem with being on Schedule 1 is that it means that there's no use, therefore there's no point in researching it, and you're just kind of like, nope, can't go there. And we all know that that's not fair and it cuts off avenues for doing the kind of research that would convince people more widely whether this is a good thing or a bad thing and all of the preliminary information at this point seems to suggest that it's pretty much a good thing. Schedule 2 contains other narcotic agents like oxycodone which is in Percocet and codeine um, and a handful of others that you've probably never heard of because you've never needed them thank goodness. Uh, so it would become freely prescribable under federal law if it were made to Schedule 2 and research would move ahead in a less impeded fashion. Uh, well, and so I think that for many of us the feeling at this point is that politically moving it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2 would be a major victory. On the other hand, you know, if you stop and actually look at the Controlled Substances Act, you find that marijuana probably doesn't fit in Schedule 2 either. It's not clear that it belongs on any of the schedules. There are five. Um, but perhaps uh, if it has to be anywhere, it really ought to be in the Schedule 5 category, which is sort of your routine run-of-the-mill prescription agents. One of the most interesting studies that came out was about two years ago, there was a study done in the United Kingdom looking at their controlled substances law and ours, which are remarkably similar. And the interesting bit was that when they actually looked at the agents and reclassified them specifically uh, without regard to political agenda and simply on the basis of harm and uh, risk of abuse, what they found was that cannabis and LSD and uh, ecstasy all fell into a category of low risk, low harm, and in fact were significantly less dangerous than alcohol and tobacco, which at least in the United States and the United Kingdom are sort of freely accessible to anybody who isn't a minor. Ultimately, the DEA has placed us in a bit of a catch-22, making it illegal in Schedule 1 to do the proper kinds of research that would lead us to be able to find the appropriate way of handling this on a national level. So I think it's good that we managed to get this uh, considered for rescheduling to Schedule 2, but on the hand, other hand, I think that's still vastly more controlled than it needs to be. And uh, we'll see once we get to Schedule 2 whether we can actually manage to push this into an appropriate place based on the research.